The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. Hello, everyone. My name is Chang Wen Lee. I'm going to present about the maturity method and especially focusing on accuracy of the maturity-based prediction. So what kind of the factors is going to influence on the accuracy of the maturity method? That's actually what I'm going to talk about today. So why we are interested in, whenever you try to apply the maturity method, the first step is that you have to choose either activation energy or the datum temperature. So you can just find out some value from the references. Also, you can just follow the ASTM 1074 to estimate the datum temperature or activation energy. However, what I'm going to talk about today is that depending on the options you're going to choose from the 1074 options, that you're going to have the variety of the value for the datum temperature or the activation energy, and eventually I'm going to talk about how those different values is going to influence on the strength predictions in application of the maturity method. Let me just briefly introduce what is the 1074 is going to look like, but the details are described here. But primarily, it consists of the three different parts. Number one is, like I said, the estimation or the calibration of the activation energy or the datum temperature for a given concrete mixture. And also, instead of calibrating those thermal parameters, you can also choose the default values. The second step is that the, suppose that you get the, one of those value, then now you are going to construct a strength maturity relationship at the specified uh, temperature. Number three is uh, almost like an end user level application. So you measure the concrete temperature. From the temperature history, you just try to calculate the temperature time factor for NERSEL method or the equivalent age for the FHP method. From those the values, you're going to do the prediction of the strengths. So let me just first briefly explain that what is the difference between the NERSAL model and FHP model. The left-hand side, you can just see that. So once you collect the strength time data from the multiple temperature conditions, then you can just feed those data with the hyperbolic function, which is described over there. So once you feed your data with those equation, you can get the limiting strength indicated by SU and K, which is called the rate constant, and P0, which is also called the strength initiation time. But what you are going to do for calculating uh, datum temperature or activation energy is that you plot the rate constant, which is K value, with respect to temperature. Then you just see that whether you can just apply the linear model which is presented by the left-hand side, and that can be applied by the Arrhenius equation, which is described at the right-hand side. Also, another difference is that for NERSAL model cases, you use the temperature time factor, which is literally integration of the temperature with respect to time. On the other hand, FHP method uses the equivalent age, which is integration of the age conversion factor, which is literally the rate constant ratio between the particular temperature relative to the reference temperature. Eventually, you are going to integrate those age conversion factor with respect to time. So what is the variation for computing the datum temperature and activation energy by the ASTM 1074? If you read the 1074, you can recognize that there are four variations to estimate the datum temperature or activation energy. Number one is the default value. Regardless of the, your mixture proportion is going to be, you can just choose a particular value. For NERSAL model cases, just zero C is the datum temperature can be used. Also, FHP case, the activation energy 40 to 45 kilojoule per mole is the default value ranges. So you can just choose them. If you want to go to the apply some rigorous method, there are three variations provided by the 1074. But which is literally the variation induced by the numerical method, how you are going to fit the strength time data to the hyperbolic function. So number one method is that you literally apply the nonlinear regression method. Also, there are two variations, which is called linearization method is going to be applied. 
depending on the availability of the final setting time. However, what you would expect is that once you have one single data set, apply those three variations of the numerical method, you would expect that you're gonna get the exactly same value of that one. Why? Because that is just a slightly minor numerical variation. It's nothing to do with the physical variation. However, what I'm gonna just present today is that you just apply those three methods and get the rate constant and try to calculate the datum temperature or activation energy, then show that whether it's gonna be really same or different, that's what I'm gonna just show that. Also, there are another variation could exist. So, like I said, you can just collect the strength time data set from the multiple temperature data. So, ASTM 1074 requires the three data set, at least the three data set is gonna be, you have to do that. However, suppose that we have more than three data sets, what we are gonna do? Of course, you can just consider the, all of the available data set to estimate datum temperature or activation energy. However, for this presentation particularly, I would like to show, suppose that we would like to divide the subsection of the temperature ranges, depending on the selection of the temperature, how such a value is gonna be changed, that's also another thing I would like to show you. So particularly for example is that suppose that we have four different temperatures. From the four different temperatures, we got the strength time data. And of course, we can calculate the rate constant by using different variation of the methods. And then, because there are four different temperature data sets, we can just choose the lower three temperature and upper three temperature, and considering the all temperature data sets, from those things, we can just see that. From those illustration, we can see that the weather, datum temperature or activation energy is a temperature dependent or not. That's one thing we can just do that. So we just choose one single data set, published in the 2015. From the four different temperatures, we just collect this trans time data. So the different colors of the dots and lines indicate the collective from the different numerical methods. So one is from the nonlinear regression method and the two linearization methods is gonna give you significantly different rate constants. Also, if you take a look at the right hand side, which is called Arrhenius plot, that rate constant is gonna give you the significantly different Arrhenius plot. Also, if you just choose the lower three temperature data sets as a reference to the considering all four data sets, the dotted line is a slightly different from the solid line or slightly or significantly different from the solid lines. But on the other hand, the Arrhenius plot at the right hand side, you can also see that, that some differences between the considering all four data sets and the lower temperature data sets. Also, if you just consider the upper three data points, they also give you the, some different values of the datum temperature and activation energy. So from those three figures, if you just summarize the values, the left-hand side shows that the, according to the different numerical methods and different the temperature ranges, you can just see that the, all the datum temperatures are significantly different from each other. If you take a look at the zero value, which is a default value, which is indicated by this salt line. So this value is a default value you can just choose from the 1074, but the that value is a significant from the, all the values rigorously estimated by the 1074. Also, if this is a figure of the activation energy, so this yellow band indicates the default value range from the 1074, but depending on the numerical method and depending on the selection of the temperature ranges, the values are different from each other. So like I said, 1074 gave a lot of variations. So we would believe that the old method is gonna give us the same value. However, if you really apply those value individual by individually, then you may or may not check that you can have the different or similar values for most cases I just investigate here in, I just observed that the significant difference in the datum temperature and activation energy, depending on the what method you're gonna to apply to estimate. So what does it matter? So we just got the different value of the activation energy and datum temperature. So what is the important? So the important thing is that the, how those different values is gonna influence on the strength prediction. That's gonna be what we are gonna care about. 
what I'm going to show you from now on is that all those different values, how those values are going to influence the prediction errors. So for the three-day predictions, probably that would be interested by the precasters or the pre-stress concrete guys. So three-day strengths, I just try to use a relative error, which is a percentage. For the strength prediction for overall test stages, which can investigate overall performance, I'm going to use a standard error. So the data I'm going to use is the Clickers experimental data, which is the widely published for explaining the temperature effects on the strength property development. So this plot, the left one, shows that depending on the activation energy, how the error at the three days is going to be changed. So you can just see that it starts from the more than 600% of the relative error. It goes all the way down to the negative 100% percent of the relative error depending on the variable of the activation energy. So this data is indicated minus 3, this is just the case that the concrete temperature is about the minus 3 degrees Celsius. The left one is activation of FH method. So right hand side is the nurse cell method. According to the different values of the datum temperature, the relative error at three days is going to be changed from the 400 percent all the way down to the minus 50 percent it significantly changes. So if you have a different temperature data set, it also similarly varies with respect to activation energy. Also, if we apply the nurse style method, the prediction error is going to be changed with respect to datum temperature. Also, for the different temperature cases three, which is a 13 degrees Celsius cases, depending on the activation energy or datum temperature changes, relative error at three days is going to be significantly changed. You can just see that. What you can get from the 1074 is that this is the default value. You can just see that the error is going to relocate at the here and here, which is different from the minimum prediction error range. Also, nurse cell cases, the error is going to be located here, which is average error for all the temperatures is located about here. If you apply all different variations of the data sets, that is uh, indicated here, 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 and here. But the important thing is that that may or may not be different from the minimum error, what we really want to get. This is the overall age test performance. Similarly, the activation energy changing and datum temperature is changing. The overall standard error is going to be changing from the 20 megapascal and there is some minimum, hit the minimum range and it goes up, which is a 70 kilojoule per mole for the case that the concrete temperature is about the minus three degrees Celsius. And if the concrete temperature is about five C, also you're gonna get some of the significant change in the overall prediction errors. Also, different changes of the temperature, which is a 13 degrees Celsius, you're gonna have more or less the not sensitive prediction error over here. However, it's going to jump after the datum temperature is greater than 0 C. So combined is going to be shown like a pink. Also, similarly, if you just overlap with the default value of the ESTM values, then that is located at the not the minimum prediction error ranges. Also, all different variations of the 1074 method is going to give you different value of the prediction errors. And here and here. So left-hand side is show that the FHP method, and right-hand side shows the nurse cell method. From here, one of the things you can recognize is that there is no big difference between FHP method and the nurse cell method in the context of the prediction error. There is an interesting comment from the Clicker. So Clicker just applied the nurse cell method when he wrote this paper, so 1956. He just applied nurse cell method with the datum temperature minus 12C or the 10 degree F, then he concluded that the concrete strength did not correlate well with the simple index known as a degree days. That's what he said in his paper. Because he used the minus 12C over here, then just take a look at the relative error at three days, it's over 200%. So it makes sense that he just made this kind of the conclusion. However, if he just used a different value of the datum temperature, such as minus 5C, probably he may have a different conclusion rather than this. From the, this analysis, what we could see was that the datum temperature or activation energy, which can make minimum prediction error, is a temperature dependent. 
that is one of the lessons I just got. Also, 1074 values, no matter what that is default value or rigorously the calculated value, doesn't guarantee that we are going to have the lowest prediction error. But also, if you are lucky enough and choose the datum temperature activation energy well, then sometimes for particular temperature, you can get zero error at the three days. Also, you can get the minimum error for overall test stages by either NERSAL and FH method. So what I could say was that there is no intrinsic disparity between the NERSAL method versus FHP method. That's what I observed. As long as you are going to choose the datum temperature or activation energy appropriately. So this is one of the things that suppose that we got a zero error of the datum temperature and the zero error of the activation energy from the all different data sets I just plotted on the dots here. But there is a rigorous relationship between the two of them. But I didn't have much time to explain about this, but you can just refer to some of the paper from here. Similarly, for overall test stages, suppose that you have the datum temperature at minimum prediction error and activation energy at minimum prediction error, we can have some of the rigorous analytical relationship between the two values as a function of the temperature. So you can just refer to one of the paper we just generated. So why we have a different value of activation energy? That because this is ideal situation. If the neural style method is perfect, then all the rate constants should be linear, then there must be no crossover effects about that. If we have a perfect case of the FH method, the rate constant should be perfectly fitted with the Arrhenius equation, and also what we're going to see is that there should be no crossover effect, which means that there is no temperature dependency of the limiting strength over here, and the no starting point over here. No temperature depends about there. So this is going to be kind of the example that you can see. Price collected this data. According to the temperature increasing, there is no crossover effects. However, in real world, we always have a crossover effect. If the temperature at all the is higher, we are going to have the lower strengths. From the, a lot of the data sets, we can observe that limiting strength is going to be clearly temperature dependent. About the 10% of the strength reduction you are going to get if your temperature is over than 20 degrees Celsius. Also, the strength initial initiation time, which can be easily replaced by the final setting time per the 1074. However, that value is systematically and clearly temperature dependent as well. That's why the 1074 clearly gave the statements that those are three statements. Idea is that the moisture content condition is not perfect, and that this current version of the 1074 cannot consider the crossover effect. So our conclusion is that please change your value of the activation energy and the datum temperature and see whether you are going to get the better the prediction error. Always the limit exists. So you can just vary the activation energy or datum temperature. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can solve the crossover effects, which is the intrinsic limitation of the 1070 method. Thank you very much.